Hello and welcome to Gateway Online today. It's so great to have you here with us today. Uh, this week I've had the wonderful opportunity to speak to a whole bunch of people right across the globe from London to Minnesota or through Europe, uh, in Africa and all through Australia as well. People who are joining us on Gateway Online and it's just wonderful that you're all here today. I just pray uh, that today you are touched by God, that you engage with His heart. Uh, that you lay down your life at His feet and let, him to tra- and let Him transform your life. So this morning, wherever you are, wherever you're located and watching this from, can we just invite you to set your eyes on God, to fix your heart on Him and just to worship Him, knowing that you're doing that with heaps of other people all around the world.
Yes, God, we praise your name tonight, today. We praise you, we lift you up. We know that you are the God of breakthrough. You're the God of faithfulness. You're the God who moves with a mighty hand. And when we praise you, we, we, we just connect our hearts to you. We, we, we posture ourselves before you when we praise you. We just see you break through. We see things from your perspective. God, I pray that right now, in the midst of whatever we're going through, whatever challenge this season might be bringing, God, that we would see you as the God of breakthrough as we lift our hearts to You, as we lift our, this song to You, as we lift our cry to You. That God, we would see You breaking through. We would see things from Your perspective. We would see how You're working, how You're moving. God, we thank You that You are a God of faithfulness. God, You aren't one who leaves us on our own, but You carry us, You walk with us. I thank you, that's who you are. And we just lift you up today. We lift up a song of praise to our God, our King.
the name. You're the name above all names. Oh, you are worthy of all praise. And my heart will say, How great is our God. Yes, God, we remember your faithfulness. All of our lives, you've been faithful. There's never been a moment where you haven't been faithful, where you haven't been with us, where you haven't been for us. 
And God, we just take this opportunity today as we lift up our hearts to you, to praise you in whatever season we're in, in the highest of heights and in the lowest of lows. We remember that you are the God who walks with us. You are the God who walked with us in Jesus. You're the God who heart, whose heart reaches out to us and you touch us and you are with us even now. God, I pray for everybody on the other side of the screen today that they would know your presence. God, I pray that there would be a tangible presence wherever they are, knowing that you are God and you are in control, that you have been there since the beginning of time and you will be there for eternity. God, I pray that you would impact hearts here today. God, that you would minister to hearts, you would speak peace, you would speak joy into people's lives. And God, as we declare your goodness, your faithfulness, God, help us to continue to lift our eyes to you and praise you in all situations, in every circumstance, lifting up our hearts and lifting up our eyes, remembering who you are and what you have done. We praise you today. Amen. Amen. Let me just give you a really uh, another really big welcome to Gateway Online today. We're really glad that you've chosen to join us, wherever that might be from, locationally. And I just invite you just to um, jump in the chat. Just say hi. We've got a host team that would love to engage with you to get to know you. Just say hi. Let us know where you're from and we'd love to see, uh, chat to you there. Yeah. And speaking of host teams, we would love for you to be involved in our host teams. If you are a part of our Gateway Online community and that's you, that's everybody, we would love for you to be uh, a part of our host team and welcoming people right across the globe into our community, praying for them and just being a part of their lives, being a general encouragement uh, every time we meet together. So uh, I encourage you right now, if you have the ability to be on our host team for Gateway Online, click that Get Connected uh, link that's come up. Uh, in the chat and we'd love to get in touch with you and, and let you know a little bit of our heart for what that means and how you can be involved because it's a really exciting uh, ministry to be a part of and one of the best ways you can be a part of Gateway Online. And so click that Get Connected if you'd love uh, to do that but also click that Get Connected if you'd love to find out about anything uh, to do with Gateway, about what we're doing, uh, about uh, connecting in more with the life of the church uh, we'd love to hear from you. So if you're new here or if you're uh, a little bit unsure about what Gateway Online looks like, click Get Connected and we'll get in touch with you. And we would love to get to know your story and help you get to know a little bit of ours. That's awesome. And we know that we serve a really generous God. And um, as Gateway, we just believe that our response to that is to be a generous people. And we do that uh, by, by giving to the work of the church. You're going to see a number of ways come up on your screen that you're able to give and be a part of that. Please just let me say, if you are new, you're visiting, you're checking out Gateway Online, there is zero pressure at all. We want uh, to just um, you to just enjoy this service, and there's no pressure there at all. But if you call Gateway Home, you call Gateway a church family, then we'd really invite you to uh, consider, to pray, to be seeking God about how he might be calling you to, to give into uh, the work that Gateway is doing. Uh, but in our, in our community, in our nation, in our world, and just see what God might be uh, putting on your heart um, to give in that space. We'd really encourage you to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Now, have you been loving this uh, Teach Us to Pray series? Loving it. It's been so good. We've had so many great stories about how God is impacting hearts and lives through this series. It's really opened up my heart uh, to be more in prayer with God and, uh, and just to be praying more with people and, and what that means for us to pray. Uh, and we're in the middle of this really exciting series. Uh, and to kick us off this morning, I want you to cast your eyes to your screen where you see Kim and she's going to lead us. Kim, part of our Redlands campus. 
but here I'm much better known as Mrs B to all my grade one students. I love teaching little people to explore their world. My classroom really is my mission field. I love that Jesus teaches me to pray as part of my everyday. Why don't you stand and we'll say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 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 Please take a seat. How good has it been saying the Lord's Prayer together every Sunday morning? There's such a richness to it. And the prayer on my heart is that we, as we continue to do that corporately, that, that God would uh, grow a deeper understanding, that we would gain new meaning together in our personal prayer life as we pray together. Our Father in heaven. It's actually important to know who we are praying to, our Father. Jesus invites us into a, a personal, intimate relationship with the Father. We get to call him Dad. You know, this is the first time that a Jewish leader in the history of the world had personally and publicly referred to God as Father. This changed everything. And Jesus regularly prays to God as his Father. And he invites us to do the same, just as he did. As a teenager, I had um, a really personal encounter with God that forever shaped my understanding of him as my Father. I was uh, sitting in the dark on my bed one night. I was crying, upset over something typically teenager-ish or something. But I had my cat snuggled in close to me. She was my best friend and she knew all my secrets. I don't care what Jason says. I love cats. Please, is there some support in the room today? <laughs> cats are precious. Anyway, as I sat on my bed crying, my door opened and a man walked in and I thought it was my dad. And my heart leapt for joy because I'd actually been sitting there longing for my dad to come in and sit beside me and comfort me. But as he sat down on my bed and he put his arm around me to comfort me, I actually realised it wasn't my dad. It was Jesus. And I know that sounds a little bit weird, but it was such a tangible, real experience for me. Jesus had come and sat with me in my pain. He'd come to comfort me, to let me know that he was there for me. He saw my pain. It was significant to him, and he cared. You know, while I know that my earthly father loves me, and he was a really great example of God's love for me, this particular encounter with Jesus forever shaped my relationship with him. This revelation of God as my dad, my comforter, my safe place, full of love and compassion for me, always there for me. This picture has journeyed with me throughout my life. He's filled a hole in my heart that no person was ever designed to fill. And there's a deep and personal intimacy with him in my relationship with him. And I've retreated to that place so many times as I've gotten older. He's been my safe place to run to through every storm, every challenge, every dark time, every overwhelming moment. I'm there in my room with him sitting beside me and his arm around me. So when the disciples ask Jesus to teach them how to pray and he tells them 
to start by calling him our father in heaven. This might have been unusual for them, unexpected for them, but it's who I've come to know him as. And we're invited into this relationship. We're invited to come into his presence as we would a loving, earthly father. It's personal. It's intimate. I know that's not the same for everyone. I know that some of you haven't had that revelation of God. Maybe it's because your relationship with your earthly dad isn't the way that God designed it to be. Maybe it's because of hurt or pain that you've carried towards God or maybe towards the church. Or maybe it just feels a little bit too abstract. God feels kind of too far removed to be able to call him father, but you'd actually love nothing more than to understand the intimacy of the relationship that he longs to have with us. Or maybe today you're still searching. You haven't yet discovered what it means to have a personal relationship with God. I really pray that over this series, as we ask God to teach us how to pray, as we seek him earnestly through prayer and through fasting, that he'd give you a fresh revelation of who he is. Our Father in heaven. Jesus says, when you pray, pray like this, our Father, my Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Hallowed's a weird word. It actually just means holy, set apart. Other translations actually use those words. Holy is your name. Our Father in heaven. It's personal, intimate. It's a personal, intimate relationship that we're invited to have with the Father through Jesus. And he is to be praised, adored, and worshipped above all else because he's a holy, powerful, transcendent God. Hallowed be your name. Holy is your name. And Jesus models for us the importance and the power as we pray and we lift God to the place of greatest honour, worth and praise. Simply put, we are called to worship him above all else. We all worship something. Worship is simply to show an extreme amount of love and adoration towards something. We were created to worship the creator, but sin came into the world and it caused humankind to lose sight of the one that we were created to worship. And instead, we've filled that hole with the worship of other things. Whether you show love and adoration towards a treasured possession or something of great monetary value, or maybe you worship Your work, you might not think that, but it's the thing that takes all your energy and your passion and your time. We all worship something or someone. And in teaching us to pray, Jesus calls us to worship him and adore him first above all things. Because he knew there'd be so many things that would distract us and draw our attention and our affection away from him. God knew how easy it would be for us as his children to revert to our childish ways and our selfish desires to get what we want. It's time to grow up. Jesus says, let the little children come to me. And in teaching us to pray, Jesus is actually demonstrating that we should come to to our Father not childish and selfish, just want, want, want. But we actually have to come to our Father with childlike awe and wonder. He is holy. He's our Father and he loves us and he is worthy of all honour and praise. It's relational, not transactional. 
the, common book, the Book of Common Prayer written back in 1662 says it like this. Adoration is the lifting of the heart and mind to God, asking nothing but to enjoy God's presence. Asking nothing but to enjoy God's presence. Jesus says if you want to know how to pray, if you want to deepen your prayer life, if you want to have a powerful, radical encounter with God in your prayer life, start with praise and adoration. See, hallowing the name of God in prayer is about coming to the Father not to get something out of him, but rather to give something back to him. Our praise, our love, our affection, our adoration. It's about being rather than just doing and getting. Holy is your name. Four simple words, holy is your name. You know, I love my name. I go by many names these days. Susan, Sue, Suze, Susie, Shushan or Shush. Quite like that name because those that are closest to me use it as a, a term of endearment. But my favourite name is Granny Shush. I love that name. That name fills me with incredible joy. I love that name. Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. I might love my name. But his name is holy. His name is worthy of praise. His name is worthy to be exalted above all other things. His name is worthy of all praise and all honour. Holy is your name. Lord, our Lord, Psalm 8 says, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Begin your prayer with childlike faith, focusing on God in awe and wonder. It's time to look up. Sometimes praise and adoration, it'll be a conscious effort. It'll be a choice. That's okay. If I only ever told Jason I loved him when I was feeling it, I honestly wouldn't tell him often enough. Feelings are fickle. But I actually need to tell Jason I love him even when I'm not feeling it. It's a choice. And it's the same with God. It's good to tell him you love him, to worship him even when you don't feel it because your heart will catch up. Because when prayer starts in childlike adoration, everything else is put back into perspective. So often we can allow our circumstances and our emotions to be the driver of our prayer. It's easy to look at our lives through the lens of a microscope, assessing ourselves, how we're going, how we're feeling, what we're thinking. We look at our day, our week, our calendar, our appointments, our deadlines, and we get overwhelmed. And we often come to God like that too, in prayer. Like we're looking through the microscope at all the minuscule aspects of our lives that seem so overwhelming. So we come to God looking through the microscope with our long list of requests. It's all we can see through the lens of our microscope. What if we changed perspective? What if we allowed the power and the majesty and the goodness of God to be the driver of our prayer? See, there's a very big world out there and there's a very big God who created the whole cosmos. And when we worship him, we're swapping our microscope for a telescope. And that changes everything. It's time to get out your telescope and look up. 
Look up in wonder and adoration of God. It's time to get a different perspective. When we worship and adore God, when we lift our eyes to him, suddenly everything else gets smaller. Oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. When I consider the heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them? Human beings that you even care for them. It's time to get out your telescope and see the vast army of angels that surround you, to see the flocks and the herds and God's creation. He says you have made them. He's talking about us. You have made us a little lower than the angels and you've crowned us with glory and honour. You've made us rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under our feet all flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swim the paths of the sea. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. It's time to look up and worship. When we stare up at the stars at night, we don't look at them and think, aren't I amazing? We worship. Isn't God amazing? When we look at the flocks and the herds, we don't look at them and marvel at the work of our hands. We worship. Isn't God amazing? By con commanding us to worship, he's inviting us to enjoy him. It's one of the reasons why I love singing songs of worship so much. They're prayers of adoration to God that are set to music. It's why we begin our corporate gatherings with worship. Because it's an incredible opportunity to come together, to look above the concerns of our own life, the worries, the anxieties, the momentary troubles, the burdens that we've all walked in with. And we get to focus on him who is far above all the minuscule aspects of our lives. Some of you deliberately come to church late. Or maybe you jump online late to miss the worship. Maybe you have trouble getting out of bed on a Sunday morning. I can understand that. But I want to encourage you. It's such an important part of our gathering together. It's part, an important part of our relationship with God. Make the effort to get to church on time because by coming together to worship, we are opening the door to heaven. We are gazing on his wonder and his majesty together. We are looking through the lens of our telescope. It's why I love raising my hands in worship. I am lifting my telescope. I am changing my focus because when my eyes are up here, it's hard to look down here. It's hard to focus on all the minuscule worries and anxieties and concerns that I have. It's time to change perspective. I want to encourage you, turn up on time. I really want to honour our worship team here at Gateway. They do an incredible job. And I know that it's not just because they've got incredible gifts and talents. It's because they long to lead us into God's presence. They do a fantastic job. I don't know if many of you realise how blessed we are by our worship team here at Gateway. Let's give them a round of applause. They... And it's not because we're glorifying them, but we're so grateful, so grateful for the way that they help us to glorify God. If you're not enjoying prayer, it's time to start praising God until you do. 
If you're not enjoying prayer, it's time to start praising him until you do. It's time to fill your heart with a new joy and change your perspective. Focus on the characteristics of God that you love. What's the prayer of thanks in your heart that you can begin to worship him for? Praise God until joy fills your heart. The early believers chose to worship God, not just when things were going well or things were comfortable or even just as a response to their victories. They chose to worship God in the midst of their trials and persecution. And when they did, God gave them the courage to speak up. And it's time, I believe, for us to speak up. Whatever trials and challenges you're facing right now, when we lift our hearts in worship to God, when we choose to focus on him and not our momentary troubles, we're filled with the courage to speak up. Jesus never said to his followers that life would be easy. Actually, he said the opposite. He said, in this world, you're going to have trouble. But take heart. Stand strong. Don't be overwhelmed by the troubles that you face because I've overcome the world. God doesn't necessarily take our challenges away. I wish he did. Sometimes he does. But he does help us to stand strong and he fills us with a peace to endure what does lie before us. He gives us wisdom and grace and he wants to give us an eternal focus. Ultimately, Jesus wins over sin and death. These troubles that we're facing right now are momentary. Jesus wants to change our perspective. The early believers had this eternal focus and because they did, They had the courage to keep speaking up the name of Jesus even when they were ordered not to, even when it meant they were arrested, put in prison, and some of them lost their lives because they spoke up the name of Jesus. There's an account in Acts chapter 4 of Peter and John as they were released from prison, and they go back to their people. They'd just been told, never to speak the name of Jesus again. And this is their response. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. They prayed, sovereign Lord. So not only did they pray, but they worshipped in the midst of their trials. You made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, our father David. Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against your holy servant, Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. Now, Lord, Consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. You know, this is essentially the first time that the early believers were persecuted for speaking the name of Jesus. And what do they do? They don't run away and hide. They don't cower away somewhere until the threat had passed and it was no longer an issue. They don't give up. They had every reason to to, because, as we know, it just kind of keeps getting worse for them from here. But they chose to pray a powerful prayer of adoration and worship to acknowledge the holiness and the sovereignty of God. And then 
they presented their request to him. Now, Lord. You know, this uh, prayer is 137 words long in the English translation. But only 35 of those words are actually asking God for anything. That's 74% of this prayer is worshipping the sovereignty and the bigness of God. By worshipping God, they're actually contextualising their own situation in the bigger narrative of God's story. The early believers saw God do some powerful things and they chose to fix their eyes on him and speak the word of God boldly. And what happened? The church continued to grow. I stand here today, a believer in Jesus Christ, thankful that the early believers didn't give up. They kept speaking up the name of Jesus. They were filled with courage and that's what we need to do too. In the face of our trials, we need to pray and speak up with boldness. Let's be a church that's known to speak up boldly. You know, there are so many challenges facing our young people today. It's getting harder and harder for them. And there's a generation that is coming behind us who are looking to us. They're looking to the example that we set and the wisdom that we can share. We want them to be thankful that we were a church that had the courage and the boldness to continue to speak up even when it goes against society, even when it goes against the norm. We want to be that kind of church. Maybe you're facing some big challenges. Maybe they've become overwhelming and they take your full focus. You're struggling to focus on God because the trials that you're facing, they're all you can see through the lens of the microscope. But when we choose to acknowledge that God is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, there's nothing greater, more powerful than him. We actually recontextualize our own crisis in the bigger narrative of God's story. Some of you are really struggling with this idea of worship. Prayers become hard. There's a pain in your heart. Feels like the trials and tribulations that you faced have actually made you pull back from God. He hasn't pulled back from you, but you've pulled back from him because there's deep pain in your heart. Maybe he hasn't done what you asked him to do. Maybe he hasn't answered your prayer the way that he, you want him to. Maybe someone's hurt you and you've allowed that hurt to fester. You've allowed the pain and the unforgiveness in your heart to keep growing and eat away at you. Today, it's time to make up. It's time to make up. Some of you have seen prayer as this give me, give me, give me kind of relationship with God and you're disappointed because he hasn't given you what you wanted. Prayers become difficult and you've all but given up. It's become less and less of a priority in your life. If that's you today, today is the day to realise that prayer is more than just asking for what you want. It's more than just getting what you want. Today is the day that you need to make up with God. Restore your relationship with him. Tell him how much you love him. By choosing to focus on God, all the anger, the bitterness and the hurt in your heart, it will be restored. You will find joy when you choose to focus on him. Your heart will follow. You will restore your relationship with God and with others. 
you will find joy again. You will find forgiveness and grace to bless those that have hurt you. You will find healing for your wounded heart. Paul says if we want to rejoy our lives, if we want to continually fill our lives with joy, we need to rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again. Say it with me. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Get a right perspective. It's time to grow up. It's time to look up. It's time to speak up. And it's time to make up. Find the joy again. Restore your relationship with God and with others. Choose to worship God and trust him. And finally, today, it's time to build up. Worship builds our faith. When we worship God for the things that we've seen him do, for his constant goodness and his faithfulness in our lives, Faith continues to build in our hearts. What we've seen him do in the past, we can trust that he will do into the future because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? He is the same. What we've seen him do, God, I've seen you move. I've seen you move mountains, and I believe. I'll see you do it again. God, I've seen you make a way where there was no way. And I believe I'm going to see you do it again. The Israelites constantly sang these songs of worship and praise to God so that faith would build, so that generation after generation would know of his goodness and his faithfulness, that the same God who did mighty and powerful things for them in the past was still with them, still faithful to his people, and we're still working in mighty ways. The same is true of us. Listen to the words, this song of praise that the Israelites sang in Exodus 15. It was a song of reminder of the goodness of God's faithfulness to them. Let these words speak to your heart, remind you of his goodness and his faithfulness to you. I will sing to the Lord. For he is highly exalted, both horse and driver. He is hurled into the sea. It's part of their story, the narrative of their past. The Lord is my strength and my defence. He has become my salvation. He is my God and I will praise him. My Father's God and I will exalt him. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Who among the gods is like you, Lord? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glory, working wonders. It's time to build up our faith in worship and adoration as we remember all the good things that God has done in the past. And there are so many, aren't there? There are so many things. He has saved us by the blood of Jesus. He has set eternity in our hearts and he calls us his children. Maybe there's a song in your heart this morning, a song of worship and praise to him for the good works that you've seen him do in your life. God, teach us to pray. Teach us to worship you. If you don't know where to start, go and lay under the stars on a clear night and gaze up and marvel at the bigness and the greatness of God and his creation. God is incredible, indescribable. Start reading the Psalms. The Psalms are awesome words of worship and adoration and praise. Even Jesus used these at times. Listen to some worship music, scripture and worship that's been put to music. If you don't like singing, 
Just let the words wash over you. There's something so powerful when we worship. There's something even more powerful when we worship together. And take the time to be still and remember all the good things that God has done. Be still and know that I am God. Begin to list all the blessings in your life. He is good. He is faithful. We're going to spend some time now doing just that. It's time to change our perspective. It's time to lift our eyes in wonder and awe of who God is, to come to him with a childlike faith, to say, God, you're so big. You're so wonderful. You're so awesome. Why don't you stand with me? The team's going to lead us. And as they do, turn your eyes, turn your focus, lift it from the minuscule aspects of your life and look at God, his bigness, his greatness. Worship him in awe and wonder. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim. choosing to turn our eyes to you. We are choosing to focus on you. We are choosing to worship you above all other things. You are exalted. You are great. You are higher, God, than anything in this earth. You are worthy of our praise, Jesus. We lift you up this morning. We exalt your name. God, teach us to worship. Teach us to keep our eyes focused on You. You are good. You are faithful. We worship You. Come on, keep lifting your eyes in worship to Him.
worship you. We lift you up. We exalt you together. Amen. Church, I'd love to offer you the opportunity if any of you would like prayer. Maybe today is the day you've walked in with some pain in your heart and you know today is the day you've got to make up with God. It's time to come close. He hasn't left you. I promise you that. It's time for you to draw close to Him. We've got a pastoral team down the front here who would love to come alongside you and pray with you. Don't leave here today until you've allowed God to minister to your heart through prayer. And make sure whether you're walking into our campus or whether you are turning up online, get here five minutes early. Get here ready to worship because you don't want to miss that. That was awesome, wasn't it? Great. (laughs) You don't want to miss that. There's something so powerful when we gather together to worship and exalt the name of Jesus. If that's you, why don't you come now and our prayer team would love to stand alongside you, lend you some courage, fill you with faith and exalt the name of Jesus above the things that you're carrying. God is good. Amen. Bless you, church.